Hi, welcome to this podcast um, for uh, Chapter 8. We're, we're talking about inventory valuation, and this particular podcast deals with um, the uh, average cost for the periodic uh, tracking method, and um, frequently this, this is called weighted average. So if you ever see the term calculate the weighted average cost, they're talking about periodic average. Um, now let me mention, uh, if you've seen the other podcasts, you heard me say this, but if this is the one you're starting with, I want to make sure you see it. Sometimes you'll see the verbiage like this. Perpetual inventory records are kept in units only. If you see that, it, it does not mean it's in perpetual. What that really means is it is periodic and we're doing that on the average basis which again is really known as weighted average okay so this is the information given to us the purchases and the sales when we're doing periodic we don't pay attention to the date of the sales we assume that all of the items um, that were uh, uh, available, you know, everything that's available for sale could have been sold. And then what I do then is go and create this table. I think if you create the table, you'll find that these problems aren't uh, that difficult. And so I've just taken the information, the purchases, how many units, the unit cost, and the total. And this matches up with what we've learned before, right? Beginning inventory plus purchases equals. Uh, cost of goods available for sale, or in this case the goods available for sale, this is cost of goods available for sale, minus cost of goods sold equals ending inventory. Okay, so that is the table that we've put together, and what we're looking to solve for is what is our cost of goods sold, what is our ending inventory, using periodic average cost. All right, so I'm going to scroll down here because I don't need that information on top. And let's go ahead and calculate this. Now, uh, the weighted average is really one of the easiest methods to calculate, especially if you set it up with the table. So all we do is we take the, we take the cost of goods available for sale, and we divide it by the number of goods available for sale, and that gives us an average. And so if I come down here, I'm going to say 21 to 10 divided by 6,500 equals, and I don't have that calculated yet, so let me get my calculator out. Uh, that equals 3.26, I'm going to say 3.1. As a general rule, you probably ought to extend that out four or five decimal places. Uh, we wouldn't do that you know for the total but when we're when we're calculating the average cost per unit we probably want to extend that out a little bit. And now that's what I have here. This is my average cost per unit. Average cost per unit. And so now I'm just going to use that number and multiply it by the number of units. My cost of goods sold were 5200. I know I sold 5,200 because I totaled all the units I sold and it totals 5,200 units. Oops, there we go. So 5,200 times $3.2631. Go, I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. 5,200 times 3.2631 is 16968 now what's the amount of my ending inventory remember it's it's cost of goods available for sale minus cost of goods sold equals ending inventory so i can subtract that number i can subtract those two numbers and i get 4000 two hundred and forty two 
Now, of course, I can verify that because I can just multiply my ending inventory times the average cost. And 1300 times 3.2631 is 4242, which ties with that number there. Okay, so that is uh, the example of weighted average or what we would think of as periodic average cost.